How's it going, Geometry Crew? This is your guys' first ever flip classroom experience. I'm speaking to you from the internet. Alright, today we're going to look at 1.3 measuring segments. Alright, first part of 1.3, the ruler postulate. All that says is every point in the line can be paired with a real number and that makes a one-to-one -one correspondence. AK, if you have a ruler, you can assign a number to each part of it, like a ruler does, and that, that's all it says. All right? The ruler postulate says that I am the ruler, and I postulate that. All right. <clears throat> what the ruler postulate allows you to do is to find the distance between two points. All right? Now, this is going to be really, really, really hard. To find the distance between two points on a straight line, you take the bigger coordinate and you subtract from it the smaller coordinate. All right, I was lying. This is one of the, one of the most basic things we're going to do. Now, don't let this definition scare you because the definition is it's the absolute value of A minus B. Now, absolute value makes anything that's negative positive because absolute value means distance. You don't say, I dug a negative seven foot hole in the ground. You dug a seven foot hole in the ground. I don't know why you're digging holes in the ground. But the way I always say, take the bigger number and subtract the smaller number. If you do that, it's always positive. It's just remember, no negative distances. All right. Let's look at some examples. So they're asking for UV and SV. Okay, so UV, there's no line on top of it, which means they want the length of UV. So I'm going to look down here, and I see U is at the point 10, and V is at the point 14. Now, if you use the book definition, you do 10 minus 14, absolute value of that. So 10 minus 14 is negative 4, absolute value of negative 4 is 4. That's not the way I roll. The way I roll is my bigger number is 14. So to find distance, I take my bigger number, and I subtract from it my smaller number. So 14 minus 10, that gives me 4. So u, v equals 4. Now, if you really, really get stuck and forget how to subtract, you could just go 10 to 14 to 4. There's 4. That distance is 4. All right? Now to find s, v. Ah, oh, too bad they didn't make you find S, V, S, U. <laughs> All right, anyway. As V, so V is 14, right? I have that written up there. And S is negative 4. So now what's my bigger number? Well, V is because it's 14. Negative numbers are always smaller than positive numbers. So I'm going to go 14 minus negative 4. I subtract a negative. A bad thing happens to a bad person, and that's a good thing. I get 18, so the length of that is 18. And you could count through that as well instead of doing the subtraction. But just, it's big number by a small number, guys. All right. Remember, you can pause whenever you need to pause. All right. Oh, no. My face went away a little bit. All right. Segment addition postulate. I'm going to make that a little bit bigger because I'm getting older all the time. Time is never stopping. Things are beeping at me. It's crazy in here. This is the segment addition postulate. It looks like a little deal, but it's going to come up a lot this chapter, all right? All it says is if you have a line, it's equal to the sum of the two parts. That's like saying if someone asks you how long does it take or how many miles do you live from school? Let's say you live five miles. But you go two miles down one road and three miles down another. So if you add up the length of each road, you get the total distance traveled. All right, that's all segment addition is. is the line equals the sum of the two parts. Mm -hmm. This is a very sappy postulate. Okay. <clears throat> Let's take a look at this example. Well, I'll go back up here, give you guys a second to write that, think about it. It's A, B plus BC equals AC, the whole thing. All right, 
All right, we have a diagram, and they give us something. They tell us JL is 120, and we need to find JK and KL. Okay? So the whole thing, JL is 120. <clears throat> so I know the whole thing, but I want to know each piece. But according to my postulate up here, JL would equal the sum of my parts, right? So it equals JK, just kidding, plus KL, right? So now I'm just going to plug in what I know from the screen. See, I'm pointing at the screen. It looks like I'm pointing at you, but I'm pointing at the screen. So JL is 120. JK is 4X plus 6. Again, I'm just plugging in what I know about JK. All right. Plus KL was 7X plus 15. And again, I'm just plugging in what I know. I got all these from that. I'm not scribbling it out, I'm highlighting. Hey, that went terrible. No, I'm highlighting. All right, now it's time for some good old fashioned algebra. So I get 120 equals 4x plus 7x is 11x. 6 plus 15 is 21. We'll subtract 21 from both sides. That's 99 equals 11x. Divide both sides by 11. I wrote 10, so I goose. There you go. 9 is my x. I'm done, right? No, you're not done. Don't be silly. They ask what were the length of each segment. So what I have to do is I'm going to have to go through and plug in 9 to each of those. So JK equals 4X plus 6, right? So I'm going to plug in 9 for my X because X equals 9. I know that. I did that. I mathed it real hard. So it's 36 plus 6 is 42. So JK is 42. Now, there's two ways you can find KL. One way is if JL is the sum of the two parts, then 120 minus 42 would give you KL, right? Or I could do the KL equals 7X plus 15, and I plug in my uh, 9 again. Sorry, not as you like. So that's 63 plus 15 is 78. So those are my two answers. And do they add up to 120? 42 plus 78, 2 plus 10, 1, 8, 12, 120. Yay! All right, this is huge. Huge. I need a bigger highlighter. That's ridiculous. Oh, that's way better. All right, this is huge. Right here. I don't know why it, what's going on. That's terrible. Okay. All this says is we talked about naming a line earlier, hopefully, if I was doing my job correctly. Okay. AC is a line segment, right? That has an A and a C, and then there's the, it's mirrored. And there's a line in between, right? So if I put that line on top, I'm talking about the physical line itself. If you do not put the line on top, you're looking for the length. So that's a number. AC with a line on top is an actual physical line. AC with no line on it is a number. All right? The other thing that you guys might not know, or you might know, is if you see a dash on the line, like you see here, that means that those two segments are congruent. They aren't the same segment, but it's, they're congruent. That's what this signal means. If you see that symbol, it's saying two physical things have the same measure. I know it's kind of ridiculous, but you got to know this notation. We're going to be using it for the next nine months. All right. And then below, since those are numbers, there's no line on top. You're saying they're equal to each other because they're actually numbers. Hey. 
Yep. We'll talk about that more all year. All right. So a question you get might get asked are, are these segments congruent? All right. Oh, there's way too much work here. Way too much work. Ah, my face. I can't feel my face when I make the video. We're just... Yeah, oh, well, you guys can deal with it. So we need to find out if two segments are congruent. So what that means is we have to find AC and BD. That means we have to find the measure of them. Now, these guys did the book definition. I would have done A is negative 2, C is 7. So I do C, C is 5. 5. I would have done 5 minus negative 2. Bad thing happens to a bad person. It's a good thing. That's 7. And for BD, I would have went from 3 to 10. So 10 is my bigger. Minus 3 is 7. And if they have the same measure, if they're the same length, then yes, they are congruent. All right, last slide. We're almost, we're almost there. Sprint, sprint, sprint. A midpoint takes a segment and it cuts it into two equal parts, which makes sense. All right, midpoint, middle, middle point cuts in half. Now, if you have a line that cuts in half, that's called a segment bisector. Bi means two, sect means cut. So it cuts into two equal parts, right? So whenever you see midpoint, it cuts line in half. And whenever you see bisector, it cuts in half. For angles and for segments, that's going to come up next lesson. All right? Bisector cuts in half, midpoint is that point that's halfway. So let's do our last example. T U V. So U is the midpoint of T V. Well, our T U, U V, and T V. Well, U V is a ray. I can cause skin cancer. All right, that was not funny. So here we go. So U is the midpoint of T V. You notice how I didn't make any jokes about like episodes or shows or. Whatever you young folks are watching nowadays. Okay. It's the midpoint. So if it's the midpoint, it cuts that segment into two equal parts. So TU is congruent to UV. All right. So TU is congruent to UV. So if they're congruent, that means their measures are equal. So I can take and set this equal to this, because they're equal, they're the same measure. So that's what I'm going to do. Then it's good old algebra time. All right, so I'm going to add one, add one. So I get 8x, equal, 8x plus 12 equals 12x. Subtract my 8x over. My chair's breaking. I'm sorry, that noise is the chair breaking. I'm not like breaking my spine or anything. All right, let's... I'm not leaning back ever again. So I get 12 equals 4x, divide by 4. 3 equals x. And we're done. We did it. Make sure you have your notes in for tomorrow. Uh, and you'll do some problems in class. Have a lovely day.